Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex here. Welcome to another video and in today's video I'm going to be looking at where certain Formula 1 pay drivers have ended up in their career over the last couple of years. Now, I want to quantify what I'm saying a pay driver is. I'm just saying that someone that people critiqued all the time whilst they were in Formula 1 for being a pay driver, someone they thought didn't particularly deserve their seat and only got into Formula 1 because of money. And I think on this list, I think the three I picked for today's episode sort of do fit that. They are probably a very good racing driver whilst in Formula 1, but maybe wouldn't have been in Formula 1 if it wasn't for their money, if that makes any sense. So I want to clarify that I have nothing against any of these guys. I personally actually quite like all of these three characters in this video, but I just want to make sure that everyone knows that at the start of this video. I'm only basically using the drive uh, sorry, the term pay driver because that's what they were called throughout their F1 career. And I guess it's probably the easiest way to define them in this video. I mean, I'm going to have a hard time titling this video. I don't use the pay driver thing in the title. So anyway, let's get into this one. And the first person on my list is Pastor Maldonado. So after having a pretty controversial career in Formula 1 from 2011 to 2015, which included one race victory for Williams in 2012 and their, their only race victory since was it since like 2005 2006 that was their last race victory before Pastor Maldonado had that race victory in Spain 2012 uh, Pastor Maldonado didn't go on to score many more incredible race results he had a few points finishes here and there towards the end of 2012 2013 was a write off and 2014 and uh, 2015 they were okay in the Lotus car but they weren't particularly fantastic they probably could have been better but Pastor Maldonado had a, a decent F1 career i mean you can't say anyone that was a, a guy that won a race, they can't be, I guess, a terrible driver. Uh, maybe some have classed him as a terrible driver in the past, but he, on his day, he was quick. Let's be perfectly honest about that. But, however, after he left the Lotus team at the end of the 2015 season, he decided he was going to spend a little bit of time with his family and then just see what happened after that. So, Pastor Maldonado was on the sidelines of any sort of motorsport event in uh, 2016 and 2017. There were rumours here and there he, that he would be coming back. He was apparently offered a race seat in 2017 in Formula 1 but he didn't take up that option to make sure that he spent that time with his family but it was announced at the start of uh, 2018 that Pastor Maldonado would be returning to a high level motorsport series. He was going to be racing in the World Endurance Championship in the LMP2 category with the Dragon Speed team. He's actually had a not bad start this season. The LMP2 category is much more competitive than the LMP1 category which is just dominated by a Toyota if they don't get disqualified. So Pastor Maldonado's results so far were a 5th place at Le Mans, a 3rd place in the 2nd round of the season and a 4th place in the most recent uh, round of the season. He's currently sitting 4th place overall in the LMP2 class. So that's not too bad whatsoever. Let's be honest, Pastor Maldonado going into a brand new series, one he hasn't really raced in um, before. He might have had a couple of tests here and there that many, many people didn't know about, but let's be honest, he's a, a pretty much a, a rookie to uh, LMP driving, uh, prototype driving. So it's pretty impressive to be quite far up there right away. He's actually now teammates with uh, Anthony Davidson as well. Anthony Davidson's joined his team for the latest round in Silverstone. So that's interesting as well. I, I think it could be an interesting... Um, I need to stop saying interesting. And it could be a, a good team going forward. Obviously, Pastor Maldonado is quick if he doesn't make mistakes. Davidson's a very consistent driver that's won LMP1 championships. Um, oh, yeah, LMP1 championships? Yeah, LMP1 championships. He has won LMP1 championships. And I think he... Did he win Le Mans with Perjo as well? I'm not 100% sure, but he's a very talented driver. And I think their other driver, I think it's Ricardo Gonzalez. I think it's Gonzalez. Um, he's a pretty good driver as well. So it's actually a pretty good lineup. But they just need to get it all together on a race weekend. And I honestly feel they might get a race win or two in the LMP2 class by the end of this season but personally I never thought Pastor Maldonado was as bad as people joked about when he was in Formula 1. I honestly feel quite sorry for him because he just got picked on so much. Yes he made quite a few silly mistakes in 2012 but then 2013 I can't remember too much um, but then definitely in 2014 and 2015 it was it was a pretty equal in terms of crashes on track in comparison to Grosjean who I know maybe isn't the best comparison but in general they were they were pretty equal they weren't neither of them were crashing that much they were both cons pretty consistent but 
yeah, I did kind of feel sorry for the guy, and I, I think maybe the couple of years away from the track have calmed him down as a person. He was slightly erratic in the Silverstone qualifying session, I remember, but overall, I think he's coming to the World Endurance Championship with a bit of a different mindset. He's definitely a, a more rounded driver than he was before that. I think maybe those few years away definitely did help him in that regard. So I think going forward, Pastor Maldonado can honestly be a very good driver uh, in the LMP2 class and maybe even the LMP1 class in the seasons to come. But uh, hopefully it's a dedication to keep going. I mean, it would be sad to see him just come back for one off season. I think he's, a, he's quite a big name, let's be perfectly honest. Most people in Formula 1 in the last couple of years would have heard of the name Pastor Maldonado. So I think... It's quite a big pull to have him in the World Endurance Championship, and hopefully over the next couple of years, he does perform, and maybe we could see him going for a championship, if not this year, maybe in the seasons to come. So the next person on my list here for the pay drivers and where are they now, it is Esteban Gutierrez. So he had a couple of seasons in Formula 1 to start his career off at Sauber, that was in 2013 and 2014, wasn't it? And uh, they neither of them were particularly fantastic. The 2013 Sauber was a pretty decent car and if I remember correctly he only managed to get one point to finish in the Japanese Grand Prix and uh, the 2014 Sauber that was pretty much a write-off that wasn't a very good car whatsoever so understandably he didn't score any points of them either but after that uh, two-year spell at Sauber he uh, was sort of removed from the team going forward and he got a testing role with Sauber for uh, not Sauber with Ferrari for the next season. I was thinking Sauber and Sauber in my head, but no, it's definitely Ferrari he got the testing role in 2015 with. And I think this was an interesting, maybe not an interesting uh, manoeuvre by Gutierrez, but I think he understood what he was doing when he put himself in that, this Ferrari role, which he probably did put a bit of money towards. And that was because Haas was coming through, and for 2016, Haas was going to be a team, and Haas needed drivers. And where were Haas going to look? Probably to one of the suppliers, which was Ferrari. So Gutierrez, he put himself in the right place at the right time, and Gutierrez got the Haas seat for 2016. I don't think it has need particularly a lot of money. They, they seem to be a pretty big company and they seem to have a lot of financial backing behind them. But they signed up Gutierrez and inevitably he did bring a little bit of a budget behind him. But he really uh, failed to perform throughout that 2016 season. Um, especially in the first half of the year where that Haskar was quite competitive. At least a lot, the first couple of races the Haskar was like maybe the fourth or fifth best car on the grid and Gutierrez couldn't capitalise on that and he couldn't get the points where he really should have. So Grosjean was the one getting all the plaudits because of his fantastic results but on the flip side Gutierrez was just really struggling. So after he was removed from Formula 1 at the end of that season he uh, got basically just kicked out by Haas. I think he thought he was going to keep that seat for 2017 but that wasn't the case. So in 2017 he went on to race in Formula E he actually scored points on his debut, which is quite impressive. And he scored five points over his three races in the sport. And for a rookie to come in and do that, that's not that um, not that easy, to be perfectly honest. I think I was going to say that's not too hard, but I meant to reword it and say it's not that easy. To come into Formula E, especially was that season three? I think that might have been season three. And that by that time, Formula E is becoming a very professional sport. Maybe in the first season, certain drivers could come in and win races because it wasn't the highest caliber of drivers. But by season three, the drivers were genuinely quite good. And I think that it was quite impressive that Gutierrez could come in and score points on his debut and score five points over three races. But in general, for 2017, Gutierrez fo uh, focused on IndyCar. He didn't do a full season, but he didn't have much success in that team and in that lineup. He really struggled. Uh, he only did a part season. 13th was his best finish over, I think it was seven or eight races that he did. And I don't know, that that's for me, I feel like Gutierrez should have been able to do better, even though maybe he wasn't in the best team. You should be able to come in and maybe perform a little bit better than that. He was definitely not in a back end team. He wasn't one in like the one of the one car teams. I remember correctly. I think he was in. Oh, I can't remember. I feel like he replaced someone injured. Was it Bourdais? I think he replaced Sebastian Bourdais in IndyCar when he was injured. And he didn't really perform. I mean, Bourdais was winning races at the start of that season. I remember correctly. And Gutierrez sort of failed to perform when he got given the opportunity of that pretty decent race seat maybe not the best but a pretty decent race seat so understandably he uh, didn't really manage to score many points he scored 91 points oh seven races there you go so he scored 91 points in seven races in the sport but he wasn't invited back for 2018 and for 2018 Gutierrez returned to Formula One but he didn't know that 
to be perfectly honest, I didn't know that until a couple of weeks ago at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I think it was, where Gutierrez, I think, did a show run in the Mercedes car. I was like, Gutierrez is a Mercedes driver? I never knew this. So Gutierrez is apparently now the Mercedes sort of test driver, show run driver, and I think he even does some work back at the factory as well. So I was really surprised when I heard that. I, I honestly didn't really feel that that was ever going to happen. He obviously had driven for Ferrari in the past. I mean, I mean, maybe just Mercedes got him because of some of the Ferrari data, I don't know. But it was a really interesting move by Mercedes to get Esteban Gutierrez. But I guess they realise he's a competent driver, but maybe just not quite good enough to actually race in Formula 1. So sadly for Esteban Gutierrez, his junior career, which was pretty impressive, he won the GP3 titles, like people like Valtteri Bottas and other people coming through the ranks, Esteban Ocon, um, I think George Russell as well, he might be in Formula 1 next year, and a whole host of other really incredible drivers won GP3 and came through and were very successful, but Gutierrez really struggled, he was good in GP2 as well, maybe not flat out the best, but he was pretty good, he was battling for a championship in his uh, last season in GP2, but he just didn't have the pace once he got to Formula 1. He had three seasons, three great opportunities. The other two seasons, he had a chance of solid points for it in a couple of races and it just didn't happen. So Gutierrez, it never really worked out from an F1 or an Indy car, but I think there are surely options going forward in the World Endurance Championship, maybe Formula E and maybe even GT driving as well. I think he's a very good driver, but just not good enough for Formula 1. He's one of those guys. So uh, I think going forward, we'll see Gutierrez in motorsport still. Maybe once he's taken this year out doing the Mercedes role, he'll go forward. Maybe he'll race for Mercedes in some sort of GT category next year. We'll see, but he's definitely got talent. He just needs to harness it because it's there, but I, uh, I can't really ever see Gutierrez coming back to Formula 1, let's be honest. So the last person on this little list is Max Chilton. Now, he had a brief spell in Formula 1. Uh, I think his second season was sort of cut short in a way, but he did one, one and a half, uh, sorry, one and a half season to two seasons in Formula 1. He didn't do two full years in Formula 1, but he raced for the Manor team and understands that he didn't score any points. He was always a little bit behind Jules Bianchi, maybe two or three attempts here and there. So I think it's pretty obvious Max Chilton was a good driver, uh, but he was probably a bit like Gutierrez in the way, probably not quite good enough for Formula 1. So once he left Formula 1 at the end of the 2014 season, wasn't it? He uh, went to Indy Lights in America for 2015. He actually secured one win, three pole positions and six podiums. So a pretty impressive uh, run of results for Max Chilton in the Indy the likes category which is the one below IndyCar. He finished fifth place in the standings after missing I think two or three rounds so a pretty impressive job from uh, Max Chilton there to manage to do that whilst uh, missing a few rounds. He, I think he showed in Indy Lights what a driver he can be. I mean there are pretty good drivers in Indy Lights. Obviously everyone's competing for an IndyCar seat and to be fair he did a pretty solid job throughout that season. I think seeing that result warranted him going into IndyCar for 2016 which we'll speak about in a minute but in 2015, he also raced for Nissan at Le Mans. They were trying this revolutionary car in the uh, 2015 Le Mans 24 hours. It didn't work. It was pretty rubbish, to be fair to them. At least they tried it. It was interesting. It was a really interesting concept, but to be fair, it was a pretty rubbish execution, unfortunately, for them. And that's just being blunt. I mean, let's be honest. We, we want to call out things for what they really are. I don't want to swerve around the point in this one. It, wasn't, it was not a good car, and they really failed with that project, unfortunately. But going forward into 2016, Max Chilton didn't race for Nissan anymore. He completely cut ties with them, and he uh, went on to race in the Indy Car Full Series, and that was for the, the Chip Ganassi team. Yeah, it was the Chip Ganassi team. So a pretty good um, overall team to be with in your first season in IndyCar. They are one of, if not the best team to be with. I think there's two or three teams you want to be with in uh, IndyCar, and that is definitely one of them. So in your first debut season uh, in Indy, IndyCar, that's definitely one you'd want to be. His best result in his rookie season was seventh. He finished 19th in the standings, but... I guess when you're a rookie, there's so many ups and downs, it doesn't always equal out to a great uh, finishing position at the end of the season. But going into 2017, we really saw the talent that Max Chilton has. He had a great season. He finished 11th place in the standings, and his best result was 4th place in the Indy 500, which he actually led for a lot of uh, a lot of laps. If you remember that one, that was the one that uh, Fernando Alonso was racing in, and uh, obviously Alonso got a lot of the attention, but Max Chilton was leading a lot of laps in that Indy 500, and uh, yeah, he, he just fell short of a podium position in that one. He didn't quite have the pace over the whole race, but 
he genuinely was leading that race on pure talent and great strategy from the team. And yeah, I think we saw right there and then Max Jordan is a pretty talented race driver. And I think if it stayed with Chip Ganassi going forward, we'd probably have seen him probably get a few podiums this year in 2018. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case for him. Uh, Chip Ganassi cut ties with Max Jordan going into 2018. But Jordan went forward to a brand new team and he went to the Carlin team, which he's raced with many times in the past. I think. Uh, Max Shorten's father has something to do with Carlin as well now. I think he's a uh, part of the part of the program. So it was nice to see Chilton go back to basically a family of his in Carlin and help them out with their debut season in the IndyCar Championship. So Carlin are mega successful in Europe in all of the junior categories like F2, GP3, um, GP uh, Formula 3 as well, and even the smaller like Formula Ford, Formula 4. They're basically everywhere, Carl, and they're definitely one of the teams to be with. Uh, but their new venture into IndyCar is always going to be a struggle. And their first full season wasn't particularly fantastic, I think. Um, their other driver, I think it was Charlie Kimball, finished, I think, 17th or 18th in the standings. And he's a talented driver as well as Chilton. And Chilton really struggled in this season. His best finish was 11th in 2018. And his uh, finishing position in the championship was 19th. So not that fantastic for Max Jordan over a season in IndyCar with Carlin. But it was definitely a learning year. So hopefully going forward into 2019, we assume that Jordan's going to be retained. It's basically a family of his. So I assume we'll see him continue with Carlin into 2019. So I'm going to be interested to see what Carlin do next year. And I think genuinely they might be in the hunt for uh, quite a few top 10 finishes there this coming season. I hope they are. Because I like Max Chilton. Chilton's a really nice guy. I actually got the chance to meet him, and he's just, yeah, he's such a friendly guy to be around. You can have a cool conversation with him. I mean, back when I met him, I was a really, really shy guy, and I mean, I'm still quite shy now. But I wish I'd just asked him a few more questions about Formula One and you know his career and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't, and I'm a bit gutted about that now. So. Yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are there any other F1 pay drivers that you'd like to know where they are now? Leave that in the comment section down below. I'll be definitely more than interested to make a video on them. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching as always. Uh, please remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that notifications bell because that's very, very important on YouTube nowadays, apparently. If you don't do that, apparently you don't see my uploads, which kind of sucks. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. It's been Alex Goodbye.